I am a practicing executive and doesn't have too much knowledge on talking. But however, I will try my best. Basically, the session is to help people in attaining leadership and if they have any problems in gaining leadership in their own spheres, I would like to be uh, be a guide to them and uh, and uh, tell them whatever I know, whatever I whatever problems I have faced in my life as an executive, as a leader. This is the basic uh, intention of this uh, session and not give you some theoretical theoretical formula, the background or anything like that. Therefore, I strongly believe that leadership is, is a natural phenomenon, phenomenon occurring in all walks of life. It can be political, it can be social, it can be industrial, it can be any part. There normally emerges a leader who takes the group forward by his own courage and wish and courage as well as goal setting and he is able to achieve along with the team whatever he wants to achieve. This is something is very important. Number two, what I want to tell you is leaders are leaders are not born. Leaders are not uh, the leaders are not born the day they were born they are made into a leader. It's not so. You don't have to have a genetic pattern to become a leader. All you need to do is to be in the right place and you should have the utmost desire to become a leader. Uh, then I don't think you will have any problem in becoming a leader. Uh, this, this is what we want to talk about. If you look at, uh, for example, in India itself, when you look at uh, uh, in 1970s, I, was, I would say, when we had Mrs. Indira Gandhi as uh, daughter of uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, none of us thought she's going to become a leader and lead the country, especially in, in tough times when we fought with Bangladesh and things like that. I never thought, at least myself, I never thought uh, a lady like Indira Gandhi can lead the country during that period. I think if the transformation took place somewhere in between uh, becoming from from being a daughter of Jawaharlal Nehru, the ex-Prime Minister, and to become a Prime Minister after uh, 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 becoming a Prime Minister over a period of time, I think he, she gained in stature when she knew that she can command the respect and she, and uh, of, of the group. Which, which is which was working with her. Whether her, her, whether her complete uh, direction was right or wrong, I am not here to say. But she definitely bloomed as a bloomed as a leader. This is something is very important. I am just trying to say this because any one of us, if you are in the right circumstances and also have the desire to become a leader, I don't think we'll have any problem to become a leader. This is something which is very very. I wanted to bring it out. When I was working with Ratan with Tata Group of companies. I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Ratan Tata, which, he, which as soon as he joined our group from Nelco and became the head of Tata. At the time, he was a very shy and uh, uh, private person. But later on, when we met over a, after some time, when I heard some speeches what he made, we could see the difference between between uh, Ratan Tata, the executive, and the Ratan Tata, the the leader, the the leadership, the, leadership, the the qualities of a leader bloomed within a person. He was not made to become a CEO of the Tata Group or he didn't become a, a leader overnight. He trained himself to be. Therefore, I think all of us can become a leader and let's see how, what are the various uh, things uh, we need to do. If you see my first slide, first of all we need to ask uh, whether we need leaders now. Especially with the growth of the IT sector in, in India, and also uh, the management becoming more and more democratic. And decisions are being taken because the companies are growing larger and larger. Decisions are taken at unit levels and very at uh, department levels rather than CEOs. Therefore, do we, we, we need to ask whether we really need, need leadership today. We also see a large number of Japanese companies where which does not seem to have a very strong leader as we think a leader is should be. We find uh, we many times do not know who is the leader of uh, many of the Japanese groups. And that's what therefore we think that do we really require a leader. Also today if we read the papers, if you see the papers today, the entire the revolution happening in Egyptian, uh, Egypt today doesn't seem to have a leader. So we are, therefore we need to ask whether we really need a leader. I think something which we need to answer. Do we need a leader? I think uh, the major thing is we are not able to recognize leaders in the real classical form of leadership, but there is a leader in every single crowd and there is a leader which is which may be in the front, which may be in the rear, who, who makes the team go forward in a certain direction. 
therefore I think we lead the leader. I think at the end of this slide I would like to throw it open and discuss this in detail and then see what, what uh, uh, whether we need a leader or not. We also need the right form of leadership in every field. We cannot afford to have uh, uh, a leader who has leaders in politics are different from leaders in large industries, are different from leaders in, in the small scale sectors because they, they serve different purposes. Therefore, we need the right form of leadership in every field. Uh, you, you can't afford, you can't ask a, a leader, he's a leader in uh, say in an industry and ask him to go and captain a cricket team in India. It's not possible. Therefore, a leader is leadership style. We'll talk about leadership style later. The style and the content of leadership differs from, from, from every field. And when I'm talking about leaders, we can always talk about how Singapore as a small island nation grew under Lee Wong Kyu to become, I think, uh, the most common, most important hub of transportation and communication. And also now today finance because of a leader's vision and leader's direction which he gave. So for example, in corporate well, if you see, Apple is just not, nothing but a perso personification of leadership of Steve Jobs. If, 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 uh, if Steve Jobs wants to go and leave for one year, the, the stocks of uh, Apple fall down. That's the kind of leadership. But that's what, how a leader in industry is totally uh, bring together uh, uh, DNA of a company. So let us... Uh, so talk about uh, what are the qualities that are needed to leadership qualities. Uh, if you go to army, there is always first and the foremost thing of an officer's, officer's academy is leadership qualities. Whether you have got leadership qualities or not, what do you? What are the major fun, What are the major uh, abilities of a leader? The leader should be able to form and hold a team. Sometimes formulation is not in your hands, but your ability to hold a team together and direct them towards a goal is very, very important. Because sometimes you are you are a leader in which probably you don't have the right to choose your own team. For example, Indian team, I don't think Mr. Dhoni has got the full full uh, authority to choose whom he wants. But he can definitely recommend or something like that. But, but once you get a team, you should be able to hold them together as a team and be able to march them towards a common goal which will benefit the this is very, very important. This ability to form a team, just just saying by English, ability to hold a team, how to, where, from where does it come from? It doesn't come from uh, just by the authority given by, by, by the company or, or the group. You should be, the, the group, the group whom we are leading should be, should be able to buy into you. This is very important. The team is able to buy into you only on based on and your emotional intelligence. If, uh, if you see in any family, Indian family, and the, both the brothers, sisters, everybody, they buy into mother more than the father straight away. Basically because she has the emotional intelligence and we, is able to handle different child differently and be able to focus them towards, towards the well-being of the family. This is very important. I think we need to learn this. This is not that it is, doesn't come automatically. We need to learn this. There are many methods of learning that, and uh, I think some of uh, some of the methods are available, and we'll talk about it later. Uh, the third important area, second third important area, is to keep the goal of the team always in focus. The the goal of the team is to win the match. If the goal of the team is reach thousand crores, if the goal of the team is that reach to 200 crores of profit or something like that. The goal, first of all, should be known to, transparently known to every member of the team. This is making it known to the, uh, to every member of the team in the language in which he understands. I am not talking about language means, I am not talking about Tamil, Gujarati, Telugu. The language is whether some of the, as the management uh, structure goes, the top understand money very well the language of money very well, the bottom we understand the language of things very well. So if, we, if uh, 200 crores is very uh, music uh, to the ears of the top management, but the worker or the uh, bottom most strung of the team may not understand what it is. He should know in the terms of how many pieces he has to make and what level he has to make everything. This, this is a leadership 
ability to talk in the language in which the team understands. Third one is to keep the internal and external threat to the team and their achievements of the uh, to the team and achieve the goal. So you have to be protective. For example, if you are if you are a lion in the forest and you have ten different lionesses and a lot of cubs around, you are not you you cannot afford to just be ignore uh, threats coming on your way either in the form of uh, a competitive lion or a competitive other animal or anything like that. You have to be on the lookout. You need to understand this. In a corporate jungle, similarly, when you are when you are leading a team, your threats, how you can be threatened by a competitor, how you can be threatened by your own, some of members of your own team who are who are not in line with the goal, or or uh, your customer who are not happy with you, even he can be a threat. So you need to take care of the threats which are coming out either from internally or externally. Totally, you should be aware what's going on. I should take countermeasures to to do this. And also you have to deploy the team in proportion to the threats and, and achieve optimum victories. You cannot uh, put all your, suppose there is a problem from one direction and if the problem is not too big, you cannot afford to put your entire team protecting that problem and leave your entire other areas weak. This is very important as a leader. For example, if there is a, I'm just telling you, if there is a uh, there was a lot of worry about safety of nano car. Of course, a lot of in it, it 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 could have killed the concept of nano itself. Therefore, the Tatas put in proportion to that uh, whatever uh, countermeasures they had to do, uh, both in uh, actually physical form as well as in the advertisement form, then making people know that the car is as safe as what it is. I have also put in a small, uh, this one about uh, being, big, how to become a good leader. One is choose the right team. Uh, if you are if you're lucky enough, you are start, you are doing something, you can bring in the right team. You, under, you are able to work on the same wavelength and frequency. Number two, define clear goals. Goals should be defined both in monetary terms and also in the term of things, in all, I, just like what I told you. Whether in, whether in the language of money or language of things, the define, definition of goals should be very clear and you should be time bound. You cannot have a uh, say that I am going to do this, but when, I don't know. That you can't do. We need to have a very clear goal set and we have to be very transparent and, and translate them into language of various things, various things and make people understand. And the third one is delegation. Delegation is not abdication. Delegation is not at all abdication because delegation uh, makes you makes your time available for for other things. Delegation is not abdication. That's what I was trying to tell you. Make your team member to do what they are expected to do. This, this is what is delegation. And uh, you uh, have you have to train, audit, retrain, and replace. If if they are not able to replace them, keep checks and balances in place. Delegation is absolutely important for a leader to have. Delegation is not uh, not only relieves you from day-to-day -day operations, but also gives you a chance to review from an overall situation what is happening. It helps you in conflict management. There will always be people in the group who are not agreeing to each other. Therefore, it allows the, the leader, gives you enough time to do a conflict management. And also, it is also able, allows him to see from an overall picture what kind of resources are needed by different parts of the team and is able to allocate them proportionally. Therefore, delegation is not, is, is not something which is to be thought of later. You can do delegation right now. And also, by delegating, you are also able to, to to identify and grow potential leaders later on. When the team becomes bigger, there you need to have teams. The last one is the share of share the spoils. When you reach the goal, suppose your you as a leader is able to maneuver your team to reach the goal in time and you are able to to enjoy the benefits of the goal. We need to celebrate them and share the spoils with everyone in the team. This is very, very important. Because even minor victories give you a chance to reward your team. Create positive energy. When you are able to reward the team and you are able to create positive energy, 
then the team will work with much more energy and will be able to make get many more victories. Most of the time it is just not money. The spare, sharing the spoil is not just the money. Sharing the recognition and appreciation is many times much more than the money. The appreciating a person in front of the team, in front of the in front of the world, maybe in a newspaper, maybe in the company magazine, maybe anywhere, accepting that he is contributed heavily to heavily in reaching the goal that itself will carry the day. While while rewarding, don't be petty, be generous. Whatever you give away, you will get ten times more than that. Most of the time, oh, should I give this? Can I be can I save a penny here and there, a dollar here and there? No, it doesn't happen. People are able to immediately understand that you are being petty, you are not being generous. It is better to err on the generous side than on the other side to create heroes in your own team. We need heroes to fight the fight your war. We are talking about becoming good leaders, we have talked about being generous. Many times I would say that even in my own uh, career as an executive, we have achieved something which, is, which was not uh, thought possible in that company. But many times we feel that we have been let down by the leader by not recognizing our achievement. We didn't want uh, a few lakhs of rupees or something like that. All we wanted to know, yes, this guy did the job when possibly the chairman comes in and if somebody told, told, told him that this guy did the job and this is how we have, uh, we have gained. That would have been the positive. Whenever it was happened, I think all the team worked day and night you know, much more harder than what they would have normally done. Okay? Leadership also comes in different flavors, just like Baskin and Robbins, you know, it comes in different flavors. And there are different styles which are uh, normally uh, normally described. One is a captain. A captain leads from the front. But when you are leading from the front, you should know that the people are following you. You have to have the charismatic and strong leadership and a strong, well-knit team. Then only you can lead it lead from front. For example, when you are fighting a war, when when the entire team is at the danger of losing their lives. A, cap, a captain or a major draws his revolver and talks, walks in the front. If he walks in the front alone, then he is, he is dead and dead and dead and gone. Therefore, we need to have a strong team which is behind you to lead from the front. Number two, leading from the front is also very essential in the form of sports, in the form of uh, thing where 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 uh, the where in small scale industry where. A, a leader is able to demonstrate his ability to solve a problem or overcome a situation. If Dhoni is not able to back out of um, out of his corner and make a victory, you know, people won't believe him. Or if he doesn't, he is not able to make somebody bowl so beautifully so that he is able to convert a loss into a victory, then only he becomes the captain. Therefore, uh, types of leadership. A captain is very important. Captain or um, uh, leading from the person leading from the front is very important for a small scale industry where a, a captain is able to understand the nuances of all the roles what the team is playing and is able to demonstrate some of them very very well. This is a very important area uh, of being leading from the front. If you see in Hindu mythology, if you see in Hindu mythology, Krishna, when he was uh, when 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 he was living basically in Mathura. He was a captain who was leading from the front. He was not a he was not a guru. Or he was not, he was he, he fought all his battles. He fought all his battles till he moved into Dwarka. Therefore, we see a great leader leading from the front, from the captain. Next one is a coach. A coach is a person who understands the process very very well. And is also able to understand the person very, very well. Therefore, a coach should understand the person and the process very, very well. And it works very well, especially as a coach, when you are not able to be there day in and day out to demonstrate your leadership. This is very it works very well in IT, works very well in R&D, finance, where you are able to train and be trained people 
and develop their skills and uh, you only if they have a problem they come to you you tell them you don't make this mistake you don't make this mistake what do you try this it's a coach a coach is very a coach is as important as a captain for a different purpose third one is a guru a guru is when the team is very big the goals are so many that you cannot you are you become leader of the leaders the guru the most important thing is the guru should believe the believe in in the in the tenants what he says if tatas believe that they should not bribe they should not bribe anybody in tatas are not allowed to bribe if ambani's believe that their project should never get delayed project should never get delayed mahindra's if they feel that they should have uh, a different different it has to be innovative in every field they are in they have to be innovative this is something a guru sets the tenets of of carrying out a particular process and he says we will not do this at any cost we will only do this is exactly what the religious leaders do that particular religion will not do this 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 but will do this 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 is a guru this is he is very important when the team is very big and he leads by saying do's and don'ts that's about all and he goes on cross checking whether there is any break the do's and don'ts which are happening third one is a cheer leader he doesn't come into picture unless and till there is a small victory or a loss a cheer leader as you see it in the i i20 i20 matches a cheer leader comes into picture only when there is a four or a six scored or when there is a wicket which is being lost therefore a cheer leader is very important to celebrate smaller and even major victories for example if you are a large mnc you cannot become a guru you cannot become a coach you have to be a cheer leader he has to appreciate celebrate the victories and push the team onwards by accepting the victory when there is a loss he also says no this is not on therefore a cheer leader lastly but not important but not unimportantly very important is a dictator when there is a do or die situation for example your 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 company can go bankrupt if you don't do certain things you don't become a captain you don't become a coach you don't become a guru you become a dictator you they have because you have made a plan you are not able to ma- make the plan fully open and transparent but you need to do it then you become a dictator anybody who comes in the way of carrying out your order it doesn't exist anymore for this uh, for becoming a tier leader you need two things you have to be very strong and very charismatic and two you have to have an organization who are able to make sure that the, that your your uh, instructions are fully followed though most of the leaders are known by the dominant styles many of them we can usually easily spot and say yes this particular leader is a captain coach guru or a cheer leader they may not remain the same all through that through their life they may transform from captain to coach coach to guru or a cheer leader to guru it can happen it is as per the situation what demands and we have to change and listen to be change and change to the situation uh, following a particular a uh, style is of no use uh, with this i am coming to the end of uh, my my presentation because i didn't want to keep it uh, too too long and so that you know i am not able to see you face to face therefore i want to keep it right now okay close it right now and keep it open for you to ask me any questions you can uh, also contact me on mentor square if you have, have any problems and uh, i think mentor square identity is already there and the email id is also there and uh, if you have any questions any time and if you think that you need help uh, i can definitely uh, try my best to help you thank you so much